it'll spin really well by Lorentz force, but it won't eject. You can see the blue argon ions around the center because none of the magnetic fields are radium. This could easily be an iron rocket. In a previous video, we studied five different models for the ET ion drive to see which one might be best. Now in this video, we're going to focus on further study of two particular kinds of model. One will have radio bar magnets wrapped around a PVC tube, either four, five, or six, to see how that behaves with this Corbino disc which has 40 kilovolt DC power that I'll explain in a minute. The other type of model will have stacks of magnets. There are permanent magnets here. They could be wire coils. Here we have five stacks of four magnets each, or 10 stacks of four magnets each. And those are also quite useful. So we're gonna study both the radio bar magnets and the stacks of magnets with this device. And we're gonna see which of them gives the more promising results. We're going to use two tubes to set up our device. We have an aluminium tube and a copper tube. The aluminium tube is outer diameter 40 millimeter inside 38. The copper is outer diameter 25 millimeter. Aluminium tube has positive 40 kilovolt DC attached to it. The copper tube has negative 40 kilovolt DC. And I've put some little plastic perspex spacers of five millimeters all around the copper tube. So the copper tube goes inside the aluminium tube and we show you how that works. The copper tube will fit inside the aluminium tube like this. You can see there's some 5 millimeter spacers I put to keep a constant distance between them. At the other end, the ends of the tube, you can see they're pretty much aligned, but there's an empty space between the two tubes, about 5 or 5.5 millimeters everywhere, and that's where the argon gas flows in to be ionized. It comes in from a plastic tube from this supply bottle here. It goes through the outside of the copper tube, between the tubes and flows out. Now when there's no electricity nothing happens but with high voltage electricity it'll ionize, make argon ions and make a current everywhere between the copper and aluminium and then when we add these magnets around the outside that current will spin and also eject the argon ions. Here we go now. As we have the radio magnets placed in front of the aluminium tube with ionized argon gas. You can see a magnetic field it makes it start spinning gently even when it's very close to the magnets but not hasn't reached them. As we move them closer it spins faster and faster and faster. Now when we place the ends of the aluminium tube about halfway down the radio magnets 
we see a tremendous blue glow from all of the iron argon gas being ionized and being shot out. Two thirds of the way down the field, we're still getting strong spin and ejection of the string of five magnets. Five works stronger than four. Past the end of the tube, it mainly spins and doesn't eject because it's out of the radiomagnetic field. Now we're going to try having six magnets in the radial ring rather than four, which was weak, or five, which was reasonable. Six magnets gives more spin even when the gas is some distance away. And it spins quite quickly when the gas gets closer. When the ends of the aluminium tube are about halfway down the six magnets, then you hear a noisy propeller-like sound in the spinning argon gas because it's being spun and both ejected. This effect continues most of the way through the radio magnets, and you can see it quite clearly here. A big cloud of gas covering the front of the aluminium tubes. Spin and ejection. And then as it leaves the tube, it goes back to spin and not as much ejection. This is with six magnets, the maximal spin and ejection when the ends of the aluminium tube are somewhere in this central regions of the radio magnet. You hear a propeller like motion of the gas. Now there is also another type of model which might be easier and more versatile to use than radial bar magnets. That's when we take stacks of permanent magnets or wire coils with DC power and we place them in a ring around the aluminium and copper tubes. What does that do? Well, it's sort of like a ring magnet and it will create a big axial north pole down the length of the tube for some distance which will make the ions spin. But also these things have a finite thickness. So there will be a radiomagnetic field all the way along the finite thickness of these magnets, which will be about 25 millimeters. And when, as the ions spin like that, there will be a Lorentz force from the radial field, which point inward, and they'll shoot the ions out that way. Let's just see how the thing works, and we can see whether we like it better or worse than the model we tried before. We can start now with those five stacks of magnets way down the aluminium tube and it just spins very slowly. As we bring them forward, it begins to spin faster. And faster as they get closer. And when they get fairly close, you can see a propeller-like motion you can hear where the ions sort of want to eject. About here. What's happening is the radiomagnetic fields, from the centers of those magnets, are pushing the gases outward by a Lorentz force. This is anti-clockwise. Then we push it on a little further the effect disappears, it goes too far forward. When we push the magnets back just a tiny bit, then we get the radiomagnetic field again, and we'll get both spin and ejection. It's only a slight distance. Here you can see the ions spinning and ejecting under darker conditions. Five stacks of magnets arranged like wire coils. Now if we flip those magnets in the opposite direction, we still see 
slow spin but in a clockwise sense when they're way far from the front. If we move them forward a bit, they spin faster clockwise, faster and faster. Pretty fast clockwise. As it gets close to the front of the tube, we start to see ejection. There. The radiomagnetic field from these magnets not only spins it, but it pushes them outward. We push it a little bit further forward. The field collapses and just spins like it did before. We've lost the radio component. And then if we push the magnets back just a tiny bit, maybe one centimeter, you get a nice axial and radiomagnetic field, both spin and ejection. But it's going clockwise now, not anti-clockwise as before. Here it is under darkened conditions. Five magnets spinning clockwise. This is a very simple and versatile way to make ions spin and eject. We're using permanent magnets, but we could also have DC wire coils arranged in a similar fashion. Now here is another ring with five stacks of magnets, but they're a bit smaller in diameter than before, 30 millimeter rather than 40 millimeter. When they're a long way on down that aluminium tube from the end, the gas spins very slowly. When we bring them closer to the end, it goes faster and faster. And then when we get fairly close, you get both spin and ejection due to the radiomagnetic fields from that 30 millimeter. Further up, the field just collapses to spin. We lose the radiomagnetic field. It goes too far ahead. We go back just a little bit. Then we get spin and ejection. Under slightly darker conditions, you can see the spin and ejection from five sets of 30 millimeter magnets. And they get close to the end. We go a little further, it collapses to spin again. You lose the radio component. Then we keep the axial. Move it back again, again and you get the radio component. Here now we have one final model with 10 stacks of magnets and they're four magnets each. So we have an axial magnetic field from the center, radio magnetic field on the side. When it's some distance away from the ends of the aluminium, it spins slowly. When I bring it closer, it spins faster. When I get really close, we get spin and ejection. Then when we move it forward just a little bit, we only get spin. It's moved too far forward. Move it back just a little bit. To there. We still get spin. Move it forward a little. we get spin and ejection. So all three models behave quite similarly, whether you have five stacks of magnets or ten stacks. This is under slightly darker lighting. We can see both spin and ejection for these ten stacks of magnets. 
they could be water corals just as easily as permanent magnets. You could hear a propeller-like sound when it's being ejected. Okay, now what happens when we place a stack of permanent magnets inside that copper electrode, which will be in line with these magnets about the same length. Far from the end, we just get spin like before, very slowly. When it's fairly close to the end, we get tremendous spin and ejection. However, it becomes unstable because the magnets inside don't want to stay in the center, they want to go off to one side of the ring. This could easily be an iron rocket. Five sets of magnets arranged in a ring, aluminium and copper tube between them, the argon ions both spinning and ejecting in a fairly versatile fashion.